Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, once again looking at our Foundry VTT series where we've been building Stormwreck Isle Adventure. Uh, we've got everything done now and we're now looking at some of the add-ons that we can use to make our, uh, our, our experience a bit more enjoyable and a bit easier. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at a add-on called Dice So Nice. Um, does exactly what it says, gives you nice dice to play with. So before we actually add the add-on, um, let's have a look how dice rolls work anyway, um, like normally without that. So I've just cleared our chat here so it's nice and blank on the right hand side. Uh, and this is where dice rolls appear. So in order to make any kind of dice rolls, we can double left click our character. Now remember this is the new character sheet with everything on it. Um, and we can make our skill checks by clicking directly on our skills. We can go to our inventory and see our weapons. Uh, and what's really nice with this new character sheet is we can drag these over to these favorites so they're always visible regardless of which tab we're on. So I've already dragged Longsword over. I can also drag uh, my Longbow over there. So now I've got both of these things here. Uh, but we're not here to talk about the character sheet particularly. We're here to talk about dice rolls. So um, this character, let's say we want to do a skill check. Um, as the player, I can double left click my character, find the skill check that I'm trying to do. Um, I'm looking at some of the fungus in this cave. I literally can click straight on here. It's got a little pop up that tells me about that skill. Click nature and it will straight away ask me what type of roll I want to make. It will default to normal, but I can choose to roll with advantage or disadvantage. It also defaults to what the appropriate ability modifier is for this particular uh, skill. Unlikely you'd need to change that, but there could be instances that where that might, might need to be changed. Um, and you do have the ability potentially to add a situational bonus. I think most people would actually, most DMs would change the DC rather than add a bonus on there. They might reduce the DC because, I don't know, it's a, it's a druid who lives in his own fungal cave. And you might say, well, blimey, you're going to know quite a lot about this. I think as a DM in that situation, I'd probably say roll with advantage rather than lowering the DC or giving a situational bonus. But again, it's up to you. It's your game, how you're running it or how your DM is running it. Um, so use what you like. Um, we have the ability, it defaults to public role, but we can say it's a private role that only the GM sees. It could be a blind role that only the GM sees, or a role to yourself where only the player sees. But most roles characters make should be public, um, it's part of the fun. Um, and like I say, we can choose advantage, disadvantage. Let's just do a normal role here for our nature skill check. So we hear a little clicky dice roll noise, and in our chat, it will give us what we've actually rolled. So it gives us the D20 roll uh, and plus any, or minus in this case, any bonuses to that. And we can see we got a 16. Then there is a little arrow on the end here that we can click to open up that breaks down exactly what we rolled and with those things there. So we can see what we got if necessary. Um, in, in theory, you would know if it's a natural 20, but it's not actually very clear, is it? What you rolled, it only gives you the total here. Uh, but it works, absolutely works, no problem at all. If I choose to uh, make a, an attack, let's use our longsword. Uh, I've got it in the in the favorite bits over here, but it works exactly the same from the other tab. If I click on my longsword, you can see in the chat, it brings up this, would I like to make an attack? Would I? Am I rolling damage or am I rolling versatile damage? So for weapons that could be used one or two handed, it will give you that option. Damage is going to be one handed, versatile is going to be two handed. So this is a long sword that you can use two handed. So I'm going to make my attack roll by clicking on attack. And again, am I rolling advantage, disadvantage or normal? There's a 23. Okay, so it's 1d20 plus 3 plus 2. So I obviously rolled an 18 and we can see... That is the case. Um, 23, that's likely to hit anything that we're going to encounter on this module um, because uh, it's an entry level module. So that's a good one. So now we can roll damage. So I'm just going to click on damage. Again, is it a critical hit? No, it's not. And I've got those options. Just roll normal. And there it gives me what dice were rolled, D8 plus 3, and what the total damage was. 
Now that isn't going to apply the damage to whoever I'm attacking. There are other add-ons that do that. Um, but now as the DM, I can manually go and uh, inflict that damage on the target, whomever that was. But this is how the dice rolls work. It's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with this, um, but it's not particularly exciting because it's all just done paper. Um, for any of you who've played role-playing games for a while, part of the fun is the, the rolling of the dice uh, and that bit of anticipation. So if we go back up to uh, our game settings where we've been many times before, we go to manage modules, we can find in here dice so nice. I've already downloaded it and installed it. Um, but I've not activated it. So I click on this button here and um, and that is now saying I want to activate it. Save module settings. As usual, when we make any of those changes, it's going to reload for us and bring us back in here. Uh, and now we can zoom uh, back in just so we can see for you guys, it's much easier to see where we are and what we're doing. Now what you will notice on the right hand side in our chat, we've now got a nice little window that talks about our dice so nice um, and it gives us this little thing. There is a tour here, it reckons it's about 45 seconds long uh, and there's dice settings. We're not going to click dice settings there because what we want to do is go back up to our game settings and go to our configure settings and we can see them from here. When we first installed it, of course, that's going to appear in our chat, but later on it won't. Um, and what we need to be able to do is make sure we can find it. So just coming in here, just like all, nearly all of the add-ons, there are options we can do here um, and change all sorts of different things that we want to. So in the dice settings, 3D dice settings, if we click this, we can design our dice or you know choose from some of the options we want to do. So what kind of dice are they? Well, we want standard, um, you know, the presets, the number of faces. We're going to have that. We can have a theme. So we could go with, a, let's go with an air theme. Okay, so it's going to change our dice. We can change our textures to things. I'm not sure how clouds will work with that. Obviously, some of these mixtures make it very difficult to see what the, the numbers are. Um, but air and clouds, that seems to work quite nicely. They look quite good. We could choose a material. We could choose a font and just change the, the font that's on those dice if we wished to. Um, some are better than others. But the idea is that this is completely customizable. Um, as you can see, we can change some of the color things directly here, such as the label color, which I believe is for the... Um, oh, it's not going to let me change these right now, probably because I've chosen um, themes here. Um, but you can change some of the colors and things manually if you wish to, which is great. Um, oh, I think it might be um, extra dice customization. Oh, I see. So, yeah, so you can use extra dice if you want to. Don't need to do that. Let's get rid of that. So this is all on the appearance tab. Okay. Um, and I can do a test roll. There we go. It's just rolled one of each of those dice. As you can see, they're nice three-dimensional dice that roll across the screen. So you can actually see what you're rolling. Um, it has not reported that test roll in the chat, but that's okay. It will report our normal ones. Okay, let's say we're, we're happy with those. Okay, we can go to preferences. There's things like automatic hiding. We can put on sound effects, whether we want them on. We can turn the volume up for those. Um, do we want to mute all sounds for blind and self rolls and ones that the dungeon master rolls as well? Um, even if they can't see them, they'd be able to hear those dice rolling, so we could choose to mute those. Me personally, nope, I'm going to leave that on because I like my players to know that I'm rolling dice even if they can't see what I'm rolling. Uh, it can be a really useful tool. Uh, and sometimes I roll dice for no particular reason, but I want them to be thinking, I want to build a bit of tension, get them a little bit nervous. I think that works quite well. Uh, the table surface is felt by default, but we can make that, let's make it metal and see what that sounds like. Hmm, I didn't detect any difference myself. Um, there we go, never mind. <laughs> it sounded the same to me. I'm not sure if you heard any difference in that. But there is, you can see, there's lots of different things we can change. I mean, I'm happy with felt. I don't need it to blast my ears out. Uh, special effects if we want to. Um, it looks like these are things that you would have to build in here. So if they roll a particular type of dice, um, it can do uh, particular animations. Let's say, so on a, 
well, I think the common one people might want to do is like a D20 on a result of 20. Uh, it's going to do something. Uh, oh, I see. I need to scroll. So on a 20, it's going to do an animation of glass impact, whatever that looks like, um, or particle blaze or whatever, whatever it is that you're choosing there. So you can do that if you want to make to highlight when something has happened, uh, a critical with a natural one, a critical with a, uh, a 20, whatever suits your game. Um, I'm not worried. I don't really care about that personally, um, but it's there. You can make those changes if you want to. Uh, performance. Um, so that you can change the image quality if that is uh, a bit of an issue for you on your machine rather than just turning it off. Um, and you can have shadows on or not if you want to, a couple of bits like that, just to make sure you're getting, uh, you're getting the effects and you're enjoying the experience without it tanking your game um, and slowing up your, your actual game itself. Uh, and of course we can here back up and restore, we can save our different role, uh, our different dice makeup and stuff. Okay, but most of the time you're probably only going to come to appearance. So I'm going to save that. Okay, um, and uh, just have a quick look at these other things. Rollable area. So can I set it so that there's only a specific area that they're allowed to roll on within that? I was expecting a pop up window and it hasn't appeared. Um, okay, that doesn't appear to do what I thought it was going to do. It wants me to define a portion of the screen, but it's not actually bringing me up an, an option to do that. But that's okay, because I'm not worried about that setting either. Um, I don't, don't really care if it rolls right across the screen. Uh, in some ways, I'd prefer that. Uh, I can set the maximum amount of dice that are allowed to be rolled at any one time. I can't imagine in D&D there's going to be many occasions I'm going to want to roll more than 20 dice. Now, that doesn't mean it won't roll them. What it means is it won't animate them. So in the chat, it will still give you the correct result. It just won't show all the dice on screen. So again, a bit of a performance thing. I would keep that low. Uh, global animation speed, you can see it's the player's choice. So this is one really interesting thing with this particular add-on. I am changing the default dice, but each of the players has, has access to these dice settings themselves. And they can set their own dice how they want to be. Somebody, you know, the druid goes for the, the typical, oh, I need green dice. I'm going to do that. And the, uh, the sorcerer goes, well, I want ones that look like they're on fire, etc. They can customize their own dice however they want. And I really like that. So players can make it their own, which is very nice. Uh, simultaneous roles merged. Yes. Same message. Uh, roles are merged. Yes. Uh, dice can be flipped. What does that mean? Uh, when a die has uh, has finished rolling, can it be flipped by newly adding added rolling dice? Oh, okay. It doesn't change the result, but it just means if you've got dice already on the table, like the animated picture dice, a new dice hitting it might knock it over. Doesn't change the result of the original roll. Do you want to disable these during combat? Okay, yeah, you could do. Um, disable for initiative rolls. So it doesn't animate dice for initiative rolls. What about... Um, do we display chat message immediately? So that means before the animation has finished, it already has popped it in the chat. I think if you're going to do that, what's the point in rolling the, having the animated dice? I like that little bit of delay while they're waiting for those dice to finish rolling, even if it is, literally is seconds. Or, you know, under a second in some case. Uh, enable 3D device on roll tables, um, so when we're rolling on a table, so it might be a magic item table or wandering monster table or something, are we going to animate the dice? Um, we can say yes, we'll have it for every roll, or we can say no, we don't need it for that, we just need to see it in the chat. Those kind of rolls are the ones that the DM would generally make only to themselves anyway, um, but again, okay, it's your option, it's your what you want to do with that. Um, so again, just other things, 3D dice for NPC rolls. So an NPC, the shopkeeper, is um, it needs to make a roll for some reason. Um, do we show their rolls as in animating dice? Now remember, if I'm rolling animated dice as the DM, the players aren't seeing my animated dice roll. They're only seeing the results of that roll. They'll hear it, but they won't see it. So it's very, it's purely aesthetic. This view, this um, this add-on, it doesn't actually change the functionality at all. Uh, it just brings a little something else. Okay, allow interaction with uh, with rolled dice again about, you know, if there's dice already on the table. And show ghost dice for hidden rolls. Where possible, show a dice without numbers to the players when the GM, when rolling a, a 
dungeon master only or a blind roll. So they might see that you've rolled a d20, but they can't see the result. Um, I think if it's a blind roll, I don't want them even to even see what type of dice I rolled, to be honest. So I'm going to leave that off. Okay, let's save changes. Da -da. So we've now got that installed. So let's go do what we did before. And we're going to open Randall. And we're going to make that nature roll again. Okay, so exactly the same. Um, it's going to come up, ask us what we want to do, do a normal roll. Okay, so we rolled a 16. We can see that. We've got the dice, which is nice. It fades out once it's done. And you'll notice there was that slightly delay, slight delay before it appeared in the chat. Now, we rolled a 16, but we've got a minus one for this character doing nature checks um, because our intelligence is quite low. Therefore, it's given us 15 results. So we're still going to get exactly the same rolls here, regardless of whether we got those dice switched on or not. Let's do a game with the longsword. Uh, so again, to make the attack, it's over here in the chat. We click attack. It's going to be a normal attack. We've rolled a 14 this time, plus our bonus is a 19. We're going to say that's another hit. And we can roll our damage, normal damage. And there's our dice. Okay, so four plus our bonuses and the chat is giving it. So again, this doesn't make any difference to the mechanics. It doesn't make any difference to the, the functionality. It's purely aesthetic, this one. But I think it's quite nice. Uh, I like it. I'm going to use it. Um, there might be other options for dice rolling, but I think this is probably the default that most people will use when they want it. Um, so that's it. That's the add-on Dice So Nice. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, uh, and just adds, yeah, that adds a nice flavor to it for the player's experience. Okay, that's it. Another short video, this one. Some of these add-ons are, are fairly simple, um, but have a big impact, which is, which is great. That's what we like. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, leave a comment if you think this is a good idea, bad idea, whether you like it, don't like it. Um, obviously, um, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.